All right, what's up, Dominators? Welcome back to the VG Shy Channel, and today I present to you my personalized night rose deck recipe. So yes, thank you very much. First of all, for Sean for lending me the yes the X World Champion for the GP two zero one eight or two zero nine. Forgot about that. But uh, yeah, I'm a bit sick today. As you can hear my sniffles as usual. But like, uh, I'm still gonna try to get the deck out. I already posted Night Rose versus Yasui before, uh, in my previous uh, video. So you can check that out. While I'm be posting the deck recipe for Night Rose today, and then probably some other day I'll get uh, Wilson to post his Yasui's uh, deck recipe instead. All right, so let's just jump right into it. We're gonna get into the deck. We have the full layout as usual. So we got the full layout. We're going to go into the cards, their skills, why do we run them, and later a little bit of combos here and there in the future. So let's just jump right into it with the new VR from VBTO09, uh, Butterfly the Moonlight. Uh, we got Vampire Princess of Night Fog Mad Rose. So yes, they are bringing back the G cards. Uh, like you, let's just say you can get uh, Yasui, Night Rose, uh, Harry, Lukia, and what's the last one? Uh, Shaharot from G series back into the V series. So they are rebooting them, and that's one of the reasons why Night Rose is here. Skill Auto Venga Circle when your Raga at attacks or boost that unit gains plus 5000 power and then uh, retire that unit at the end of the battle. So take note that this skill is actually mandatory uh, to retire and to gain the 5k. You can't choose the unit to get uh, plus 5k um, whether or not and then at the end of the battle you have to retire it. So this is kind of like a hard counter to Gradora, uh, the new creator marker where you just, you know, you don't really care. You just retire your rear guards and then you get to spawn them back uh, I spawn them out back onto the field again. Second skill is the multi attack madness, which is when it attacks, call plus one, choose a column, call up to two cards from the top zone to rear guards in that column, and if your opponent's rear guards great three or greater, this unit gains power plus 10k at the end of the battle. So, interesting ability where you can multi attack with uh, five attacks or maybe even more, depending on what you call it, and we should get to later. And then it's a good uh, 32k attacker if your opponent's like great three. While if you are going first, it doesn't really matter, you still get a multi attack menace, but you just don't gain the 10k, which is pretty negligible in a sense, but unless you put a booster behind, and the booster gains plus 5k, and then you retire the booster at the end of the battle. So it's really up to you. I think it's a really strong deck, because Night Rose currently is kind of like a tier 1, because number 1, you get uh, specific mills, you get to take cards back from the mills, and then you get, uh, like, you know, Free pluses and free draws and free units get spawned on the field. That's one of the reasons why it's really consistent and one of the tier one decks in contention with like DI, Dotex, and other you know tier one decks. But yeah, we're just going to get into the other good tree we run, which is Skull Dragon. I think Skull Dragon it's a must to run. I don't think anybody's not gonna run it. So it's a dead a dragon undead Skull Dragon continuous hand. Uh, this unit cannot be normal called. This means that you can't call it onto the rack, uh, to the garden circle and guard with it so yeah take note it cannot be normal call uh continuous vanguard rear guard circle during your turn this unit gains plus 2k for each card in your drop zone so that's one of the reasons why i think it's strong and the auto rear guard skill and error battle that this unit attack you retire this unit so it doesn't really matter because night rose retires all rear guards on you but you wouldn't ideally want to ride into a skull dragon at all you would want to ride Night Rose of course, and then use uh, Mules a lot, and then call Skull Dragon to finish up on off. So Skull Dragon 3 off is a must. Uh, I wouldn't recommend 4 at least, I think max is 3. Um, you can run 2 if you really want, you can you know go for other attacks in the deck. But I think 3 is a very healthy amount. Cause sometimes if you do not really see Skull Dragon in your drop zone, or you know, you don't draw into it or whatever, it really sucks and you can't end your opponent off because most of the guards are really low power. I mean, you have a really big stack drop zone, but then what's the point when you don't have any Skull Dragon to call them out? Last but not least, we have this great tree. It's called King Tentacle. So it's a really interesting deck. I think it's really powerful as well. So, skill auto. When put into a drop zone from a deck, you soul plus one, call this card to the guard circle, and it gains 10k at the end of turn. So, what this does with the next card we're going to get into, which is this great tool, the best great tool in the deck probably, which is carrying the set right now, is Columbat. You can use uh, Columbat's skill to mill King Tentacle during your great tool turn. So let's just say you write into Columbat. And then you call uh, a card from a drop zone using Columbat's skill. And then since King Tentacle is being milled by Columbat's skill, you may put, uh, you may solve us one and call King Tentacle to Regard Circle and he gets 10k at the end of turn. So ideally what you want to do is 
Okay, two turns you write Columba, you Columba Swan. You thin your deck by one card, you can either thin uh, with, uh, you usually want to thin King Pentacle from the deck. And then, do you upgrade two turn or uh, do you upgrade one turn, you ideally want to discard a card. Let's just say you want to discard a Ghost Ship, you can discard, um, what's this, uh, the Banshee. You can discard Greed Shape, any card that allows you to plus during your great one turn uh, and especially easier to discard the card either by guarding but I did not want that because you need a Kamlas but the best way to discard the card is through the great top uh, top 5 Gritchie searcher and then you add a great tree then you discard a card from hand so you don't have to really discard a tree you can discard uh, any of these draw power cards and then on your great two turn you write Columba you Columba search for King Tentacle you call the card that you discarded uh, during your great one turn which is either any one of the plus cards and then at the same time, you saw last time you call King Tentacle from the drop zone and it gets 10k. So that's a big, big column right there already do a great to turn to rush your opponent down. So that's one of the reasons why I think this tech slot, it's very spicy, you know, so spicy, spicy level 1000, you know. But I think it's a really good rush as well. So moving on to Columbar, I think it's a pretty simple, the best uh, card in the deck. Great, deck, great two card in the deck. Auto with Vanguard, Rearguard, when plays Count Blast 1, search your deck for 1 card, put in the drop zone, shuffle the deck, and call up to 1 card from the drop zone to Rearguard Circle. So this ability may be only used by a card with the same card name once upon a turn, basically in the main effect. Of course, you can't just keep staring Columbards on field and keep spawning units for free. That's one of the reasons why I think this card is uh, really really strong and it's balanced in a way where Bushiro makes it only once per turn if they do not make it once per turn it's, it's utterly broken so yeah the great two turn as I said before Columba into King Tentacle into another card that you discard to your great one turn four off is a must so uh, I, I forgot to mention that the great three counts is an eight so for the great four uh, great two counts is a pretty healthy I would say it's a eleven while the great one count we run a little bit more we run uh, 14 great ones right here Alright, uh, moving on to Greed Shade. Sorry about the sniffing all that. It's uh, really annoying, my nose. But whatever. Moving on to Greed Shade. Uh, I think it's uh, pretty much a staple in the deck. I, I don't think anybody would take it out. It enables anything from your Johnson going back to your hand. So I don't see why you're not running it. First skill contains Vanguard Circles. Uh, Vanguard Circles during your turn. If your drop zone has 10 more cards, you shouldn't gain plus 5k. And then when placed on Vanguard Circle, you discard card from your hand. You mill the top two cards of your deck into a drop zone and return a card not named Greed Shade from the drop zone to your hand. So ideally what you return is a shield value, you can return a Night Rose if you don't have any uh, Great Tree to write or any Great whatever to write. Depending cause you only can call Greed Shade a Great 2 so it's probably just a Great Tree. Uh, you can return any card but most I ideally you ideally just want to return a, either 30k Sentinel or 20k Shield or you know a PG or whatever in, in a sense. So yeah. Alright, uh, so that's all for, you know, we still have some great tools, sorry, <laughs> I kind of forgot about this. So we got a uh, Ghost Ship, alright, so Ghost Ship is a really strong, great two turn, as I said before, in conjunction with King Tentacle and uh, Columba. Ideally, you want to ride into the great one, top five and a great three, and then you discard the Ghost Ship uh, from the skill, uh, which is the first skill, which is the same thing as uh, Skull Dragon. This card cannot be normal cop, so it can't be normal cop to grab the circle at all, so take note. And then when you attack this unit gets plus 15k at the end of the battle, and at the end of the battle, you draw a card retire this unit. So it only can be superior cop from the drop zone. And ideally, as I said before, grade 1, you discard this card. Grade 2, Columba, King Tentacle, you call Ghost Ship out. It's a 22k by 24k, and the regards at 9k, so it's a really, really strong combo, and you get to draw a card as well. Last but not least, we got a new grade 2 of this deck, which is Thin Miss Banshee. Reasons why I run is almost the same skill as uh, Ghost Ship, but you know, it can be uh, guarded and we can call from hand. So, auto regular circle when placed by the, uh, your cast ability, this unit gets plus 10k at the end of turn. So, when you place it from the drop zone or by a cast ability, most likely from the drop zone, it gets plus 10. And then when you retire from a regular uh, by your cast ability, you draw a card and this ability can only be used uh, once per turn. So, Ideally, you would want Ghost Ship for the early game, but for the late game, you still actually still want Ghost Ship because they almost say the same power, uh, they almost say the same purpose, but Ghost Ship has more power. At this unit against 10k, so it's a 19k attacker. And you only can draw when it's retired by card ability, which is most likely you're going to use it off Night Rose. So one copy, I think, is fine, I guess. It's pretty much a flex spot. You can take it out for another card, you can take it out for another Ghost Ship, you can take it out for whatever, another King Tank figure if you're ballsy enough or whatever uh, or whatever card that you actually would, run, would like to run instead of that card. Alright, uh, moving on to the great ones, we have 
the new Great Tree Sorcerer, which is Tommy the Ghosty Brothers. So yes, um, I think it's standard that every deck would run uh, the Great Tree Sorcerer. So first skill is Continuous uh, Red Up Mega. During your turn, you have 5 or more cards in your drop zone. Uh, this unit gives plus 5k, so generic AF. Second, uh, I think it's generic as well on place, get you, uh, top 5 for get 3 add if you add that, I can't discard a card, so yes. Best get 3, uh, best grade alright will always obviously be this, so you can discard a ghost ship in your hand, uh, and then grade 2, column blah 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 blah, I'm not gonna extend the combo again. Moving on uh, to a pretty old grade 1, uh, Ripple Banshee, so yes, this is the draw power of the deck, either you discard a ghost ship or you discard this Ripple Banshee. Skill is, when placed on drop zone, Car blast, uh, so blast one, you draw a card and this unit gets plus 4k on that often, so it's a 12k factor. It might not be as good as ghost shit, but if the only options in the opening hand is uh, Banshee, of course you ideally want to get rid of her uh, via, you know, your Tommy the Ghosty Brothers, and then you can draw a card to your great to turn with Columbine. Last but not least, I don't see a lot of people, not last but not least, sorry, second last card. I don't see a lot of people running this card. It's actually Witch Doctor of Powdered Bone Dagger Bone. I actually don't have I have no idea why you are not running this card. This card is like the best grade 1 card in the later game to call any card from the drop zone. So, skill. Uh, add drop zone. Discard a card from your hand. Put this card at the bottom of the deck and call a grade 1 card from the drop zone to the red up circle. If you, if your drop zone has 10 more cards, you may call any grade regardless. So, technically, if you think about it, it's a minus 1 from hand, but you plus 1 on board. So, you can call any card literally if you have tell more drop zone of course but most by the time you know you reach your later stages into the game like your grade 3 turn uh, your like second or third grade 3 turn you should have at least or if not more 10 or more grade 1s on board uh, not more grade 1s 10 or more cards in the drop zone in order to use uh, Nagobon's ability and it's pretty simple to get Nagobon in the drop zone if you have her in hand obviously you just you know guard with it and then if you have her on the field your night rules will probably kill her off uh, because of the ability. So it's pretty simple to use. I don't see why not. Uh, why some people aren't running up. Maybe I'm not four copies. If you really want, you can run like three. I would recommend at least three. And uh, it's not really a plus, but it's still able still to get uh, units on the board easier. That like you can super call units that are uh, have uh, the ability to not be caught from hand, like Skull Joiner, the Ghost Sheet, or whatever. So it's a really good deck. I think it's really strong, and you guys should run it. Last but not least, we got a uh, Cutlass, a uh, Dancing Cutlass. I think it's the best counter charger of the deck. And you see, this deck runs out of Color Blast really easily, especially if you are doing a lot of combos here and there, and every turn you are using Columbat. So, every turn you are at least using two Color Blast, which is Columbat, ideally Columbat and Night Rose. So, Dancing Cutlass is a really good card in order to refine the Color Blast as well, and it calls itself from the drop zone to the field. So add the drop zone, buy one of your other dungeon cutlers from your drop zone, put the top card of your deck into your drop zone, and call this card to red up circle and call Chashwan. So it refunds the cost of binding itself from the drop zone into the bind, uh, into the bind zone. So you mill one of that, and then you superior call itself from the drop zone onto the red up circle, and you call Chashwan. So it's a level K attacker such booster, most likely if you're on that rose, cause the skill. Alright, so that's basically it for uh, the great ones, great twos, and great trees. As trigger to us, as you can see, it's pretty interesting where I run um, the draw sentinels right there. You can run um, the full 12 crit sentinels if you want, uh, 12 crit uh, 4 heals if you really want, and you know, the crit sentinels instead of the draw sentinels. But I think just that sometimes if you really do break, you really do break hard. So I think the draw sentinels is there to help you uh, in the sense where you don't really you can have a chance to recover really well. And then, against some decks where you really need the Sentinel, even though you are a Protect Clan, yes, you still get a Protect Marker, but in the early game where you really need to just PG a pet because it's too big and you don't want to take the, a lot of damage for some reason, like let's just say um, you check double crit or something and then it becomes like 3 or 4 crits in the early game, I don't know how, but it is possible. So ideally, you want to just PG and don't really think about it. Even though the 30k sentinels might help you, but the power might be bigger than you think it is. So yeah, the draw trigger sentinels are there. But as I said before, triggers are really, really up to you. Sui You can just run whatever the hell you want. And of course, the starter there is uh, just for show. So yeah, thank you much for watching. Hope you guys liked it. This is the deck recipe that I used uh, in the video against Wilson Yasui. 
So yeah, hopefully you guys like it. I'll be posting more deck recipes and deck fights really soon. Hopefully I'll get Rusen to post his Yasui deck recipe and then you guys can see what he runs in this deck instead. So yeah, thank you much for watching Dominators. Hope you guys liked it. This is VG Shy and I'm out. Peace.